when you get the sheets uh, that are the templates in ELW 112, they're going to have the three, they're going to have the instructions of your voltages and the three lines, four lines on top, A, B, C, N, then blank space where you draw in, then A, B, C, N for your secondary on the bottom. And I will um, use those template numbers, the voltages and whatnot today, just for good practice. Eventually, you're just going to get those blank, blank templates in class. Excuse me. And then you will uh, fill in the blanks, like I'm going to show you guys this morning. Uh, I saw where some of you did, did get into the uh, YouTube video yesterday. I can see how many people looked at it. I know they can get kind of lengthy, and I'm not, I'll just be honest with you, I don't, I don't take the time to sit there and edit every single portion of it and show you timestamps and all that kind of stuff. But uh, there is an option in there that's kind of cool, and I'll, I'm going to show you on a screen here in just a moment of uh, how that works. So before we uh, get started, any questions? I mean, I know it's kind of a broad question. Any questions about what we discussed yesterday? We, we know what we're working on, right? What is, what are we working on? Different type of transformer banks. Yeah, different types of three-phase transformer banks. And like I said yesterday, we're working on the three most regularly used. Now, voltages may change. Your primary voltages might be different and your secondary voltages output might be different. But as far as configuration, and the wiring aspect of them, they all remain the same. And that's why there's so many just different banks out there in the world. And when you get to know these three, uh, then you will know the majority of them. Okay. So let me show you something here real quick. Let me go to uh, share screen. Let's share the sound. I'm going to share my browser here. And kind of a cool option here. And, you know, I've got videos for about three years. So if there's any time you want to just search through the videos that are on YouTube, and then we've actually got almost two years of online stuff in there because, well, we just kept teaching. <coughs> during the COVID period. So there, there's good <laughs> reference history back in there. So if you go to Google and just type in HGTC ELW YouTube, if I could spell <laughs> E L. And uh, this typically pops up the, the channel every single time. Okay, so we'll just, I'm going to pick the video we had yesterday. All right, think of the restaurant. Only one three-phase air conditioner, right? So let's nice. go positive here. Yeah, so open delta has a little bit of three. So there's closed caption. If you want to watch closed caption on these things, so you can actually watch me talking as it go. Yeah, so open delta has a little bit of three phase. And you can also come up here and see these three dots here at the bottom? Yeah. Show transcript. All right. It takes just a couple of minutes to load because it's every single thing I've said in here at different times and dates. Once you show the transcript, you can go to whatever browser you're using right here and open the menu and hit find on page. Now that the transcript is showing, it's now searchable. So let's see, all right, let's find this. Okay, it comes up in my search box. Mine's down here at the bottom. I, I use uh, Linux, I don't use Windows. Uh, floating neutral, F-L-O-A-T-I-N-G, floating. Then every oh, from, nice. yep. So every uh, time I said floating neutral, it starts at the top here. It goes to where I first said it. And all you have to do is click on it. Bam.
and it should take you to that point in the video. Or you can just go for it. 35.23. Where am I at now? The configuration for all the H2 bushings is called a floating neutral. There you go. So it's a real, and this, this applies to all the videos I have in there. So it's kind of a backdoor hidden feature in all the videos that I have. If you ever come up with a question, once again, it's the three dots, show transcript, then your browser has to do the rest of the work here. Click your menu, whatever one that you're using, find and page, and just use the search term that you're looking for. So I set it once there, and you can just keep scrolling down and see all the different times it happens. So that's just a little, little life hack. Yeah, ni nice and searchable. And you don't have to watch the entire video. Well, when did he say floating neutral, or when do I need to use that? It, it is searchable. So that's good to go. OK, so let's, let's try this here and see if this works. Share screen. I go to a whiteboard here. And I'm always doing this. Man, I tell you one thing. Can y'all see my video? That stylus for a Wacom, man, that thing can get lost in a heartbeat. All right. Share. Okay. You should have a white screen. Yeah. Get over here and get this off of it. All right. So I'm just going to hand draw the template in like you've got it already printed out in D2L. Let's see if this does right. A, good. B, C, N. And then small A, small B, small C, small N. I'm going to draw my lines out. One, two, three. Aaron, you're my quality assurance guy. Is it coming in pretty clear? Man, that's beautiful. Oh, sweet. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So to help me not have to bounce back and forth, well, I know you guys are probably on different devices here. Let me go to D2L and force home. Make sure I pick one that we've already got here. We're going to start with Open Delta. I'm sorry, I need the template. I don't need the actual picture. Open Delta. Okay. And by all means, if you got stuff sitting over to the side there, or if your brain is on fire this morning. Go ahead and help me through this drawing. All right, so the open delta bank, as far as what's on the template, the primary is 7,200 and 12,470. Now, when I draw it like that, what is the first number? Phase to what? Phase to neutral. Correct. And this helps every single time. Now that I'm getting started, I'll come, come out to the end of the neutral line right over here on the uh, right hand side. And I'll just go ahead and ground it, get that over with. They all are grounded neutrals. And what's the second number? Phase to phase. Phase to phase, to phase, phase. correct. So I'm going to cover all the space to grounds A to N, B to N, C to N. Draw my arrows in. Then 7,200, 7,200, 7,200. Bolts, bolts, bolts. Then fade to face to face. And if you get in the habit of doing this, it's the same on all three drawings. A to B, B to C, A to C. So the next drawing is going to be A to B, B to C, A to C. That means I've covered all three face to face voltages. Got my arrows in. And what's my voltage? 12,470. 
How do I um? Oh shit! What I just? How do I get your your face off the screen? Cause you're. You should be able to just swipe it move. to the right. Did you um change something? So now I got a black screen. No, I haven't changed anything. Is everybody still showing white screen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you swipe you yeah. swipe too like too broad. Swipe back to the left and then it should show his screen again. And then just pinpoint your finger on the little like top box where he's at and then just swipe that. I also think on the share screen too, if you're showing a share screen, you can double click on that and that one will take over. You there? Yeah, but I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the rest of the question reads, draw an open delta bank, include primary and secondary voltages, face to face and face to ground. Do the transformer secondary windings need to be changed? That's the same question on every single one. So what's the only bank where we need to change the windings in the transformer to ACBD, the only bank? The Y. The Y, yes. And this is open delta, so we don't need to do that. So I'm just going to put a no answer over there, no windings. And my secondary voltages are 240 over 480. Well, I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom I did at the top. Let's see, secondary, 240 over 480. A to N, B to N, C to N, then A to B, B to C, A to C. Same exact thing I did at the top, now I'm just doing it at the bottom. Okay. I don't know why that white line comes in there like that. Uh, let's see, Mr. iPhone decided to join. Okay. So phase the ground 240, 240, 240. That's all volts. And then 480, 480. 480 that goes all the way up and down there. Uh oh, I just remembered. Open Delta has a power leg, right? Yes. It does. So this is going to be wrong here. I'm going to scratch that out and I'll fix that later. All right, how many transformers are in an open Delta bank? Three. Open delta. Oh, two. 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 Yeah, good, good. So I'm going to draw a couple transformers in. One, two. Draw my bushings up here. Draw my bushings in. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, got those drawn in. Can I use any two primary phases? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can use any two primary phases I want to. Keep my mind right there. I'm going to draw a line from A and go to this bushing, my left hand bushing. I'm going to draw a line from B and go to this bushing. Now I need to ground the other bushings. So I'm going to come all the way across here, ground this. Hmm, my mind just remembered closed delta is the only one that has a floating neutral. So I'm going to connect this one. Connect it right there. Okay. Which transformer is my lighting transformer? The left one. Left. Right? Left. The left. Yeah, so I'm just going to draw an L in here. And this is the power transformer. 
So a lighting transformer is the same kind of transformer that powers my house. So I'm just going to draw it as such. Like I said before, and the guy in the video did pretty good at good on it too. I'm going to draw my neutral line in first. Make a connection. Then I'm going to work left to right and go by the alphabet. A. B. Use the far right hand bushing of this transformer. C. So I've covered one, two, all three of the hot legs. The only thing that remains is I need to tie my two transformers together with tie and bus. My wiring's complete. But I still need to figure down here. C is my power leg. Right here. It's not going to be 240 phase to neutral right here because I'm using the lighting transformer windings and the power transformer windings of two separate primary phases. So if anybody's got a calculator up there, it's handy as 240, that's my phase to ground voltage times 1.7325. That should be 416. Yes. Okay. Questions, that's it. <clears throat> you left your, one of your grounds out on the okay. secondary. Is um, that... The L or P transformer? Uh, the L. Where? For uh, your X2, shouldn't that be a ground? It is. Oh, okay. I just couldn't see it then. Okay. Uh, like yeah. the little lines. So if you want to come over here, I'm off the page. Hold on. Here, 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 here. Neutral is grounded. Let's put that oh, down. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the drawing, as far as what you got on the book, does a little bit different thing. Let's see if I can get a little uh, pretty here. The drawing has it going like this. Correct? That's how it is in D2L. They both work the same. It's okay if you draw it in like this and make that connection there. They're both electrically correct. In the uh, diagram, the H2s that are connected, they have that connected to the neutral. Do we need to do that as well? I did. Here. To here, and then I went up right here. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. Good questions. Nothing. If you got questions, you see something that's not quite right, you tell me. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clear that one then. My bad. I've been muted. I've been asking stuff, but I've been muted. Well, go ahead. I forgot what I was asking now. Uh-oh. That's... That, um, the center lug on the power transformer doesn't go, doesn't go into anything? No. Okay. It, under Inside of it? Yes, it does. Inside, we're not changing windings, so it does go through. Okay. It goes from X3A, and it goes into X2BC, and then X1D. But on the outside, no, there is no connection. Okay. Good question. Okay. So let's go close delta here. A, C, N. Go A, B, C, N. Draw my lines out.
And so this is a uh, closed delta we're drawing? Yeah, this will be closed delta. Let me get back to the actual here, what they're asking. So the question asks or says, my primary is 19,900 volts in my phase to ground and my second, uh, excuse me, phase to phase is 34.5 kV. Let me get these texts real quick, make sure it's not Robbie. <clears throat> yeah, Robbie's not doing too hot. Damn, we miss the old man. I know. Me too. <laughs> he is, I'll have to say he is my best friend. All right, so 19.934.5 kV. So I'm going to do just like we did before. A to N. B to N. C to N. That covers my phase to grounds. A to B. B to C. A to C. And you'll notice I run a safe, the same pattern all the time. Uh, instead of writing out 19,900, I'm gonna put 19.9 kV, 19.9 kV, and 19.9 kV. Got my little arrows in. And my face to face is 34.5 kV, 34.5 kV, and 34.5 kV. All right, secondary voltages says it's 120 to 40. Okay, so A to N, B to N. C to N and A to B, B to C, A to C. All right, so I don't want to mess you guys up. And there's a certain way that I draw closed delta. If you want to study the sheet and do it by the sheet that's in D2L, you can do it that way. I, I do it a little bit differently here, and you're going to see it in just a moment. It doesn't hurt either way. You remember on closed delta, I mean, excuse me, open delta, which, which leg was the high leg, A, B, or C? The what? The high leg? Yeah, which one was the power leg, A, B, or C on open delta? Um, C. B? C was, yeah, C was. And I kind of like to keep it that way. So I'm actually, I'm not gonna draw my secondary voltages in yet. I'm, I'm gonna do that when it, when it comes time after I get my transformers in. Mm -hmm. How many transformers are in a closed delta bank? Three. 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 So I'm gonna go one, two. Ooh, that's an odd looking transformer. Three, draw my bushings in. Why it does that? Let's see if this will do it. Nope. I don't know why I drew that line in there. I got to get rid of that. Erase. There it goes. And back to draw. And my lines over here. Three secondary <laughs> pushings per transformer. Two, three, and one, two, three. Uh, on the drawing, you don't have to label these. That H2, H1, H2, or X3, X2, X1, you don't have to label them just as long as the wiring's correct. If labeling them helps you, 
to go ahead and do it, but I don't. Got three transformers. Now I have to use all three primary phases. And like I said, I'm a left to right ABC kind of person. So A, B, C, those are all going to my H1s. Then I need to tie my neutrals in. One, two, three. This is where I've got to remember floating neutral. This does not connect to the neutral line. I just let it float. I'm just gonna leave it on the transformers just like that. And do you want us to label that? It, I'll see it in the drawing, but if you want to label it, that's fine. It pretty, it's pretty easy. And if we see it in the drawing and we see that line connected right there, well, that's wrong. And how we grade these is, is pretty simple. There's a hundred, uh, if I remember correctly, I'll have to relook. There's 113 different points in all three drawings. So if you miss one, you got a 99. You pretty much have to do pretty poorly in all three drawings for these things for you to get a bad grade. All three are graded at once. There's so many different points on here that you got a long, you got a little bit of latitude, but here, just do good. Okay. Floating neutral, it is grounded, but I don't have it grounded from the bushings up to the neutral. I just let it float and sit there. All right, so I've got a lighting transformer in the center and two power transformers on the outside. I like to start in the center because lighting, just like in open delta, is the same thing that can power my house. Now here's where I deviate a little bit and you'll notice the difference in the two. Always draw your neutral line in first. I'll do it just like open delta, A, B, I'm going to tie the transformers together, bang, bang, and you'll notice it's the two closest bushings together, here, 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 and here. Then I only have one line remaining, I've got A and B covered, correct? Power goes down to C. And the line here at the bottom that interconnects them both is really what's tying them both together. A little bit different from the other one, right? Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, on the other one before, what we had in the lighting transformer is that went to B on the left-hand side, then C on the right-hand side of lighting, then both power transformers were connected to A. This works fine also, what I've got drawn right here. And it, pretty, it, it stays in line with my open delta. If I took my hand and covered up the left-hand side transformer, I'd have an open delta bank, perfectly. Now I've just added the this transformer on the left-hand side and connected it with C also because I need more three-phase power. Wiring is complete. Now I just need to do my bottom voltages. So A to N is 120. B to N is 120. Got to watch out here. C is my power leg. So that's 120 times 1.7325 equals 208. So that's 208. This is where a lot of people get tripped up here is they forget the power leg voltage is the phase to ground voltage times 1.7325. And they put 120 down here. That's not correct. Phase to phase is 240. 240. 240. 240. Okay. That's it. That's complete. No, I got one more part of the question. 
Do the transformer secondary windings need to be changed? No. No. No, no this is delta. It's not Y. Okay, Aaron, same thing before. I'll go red here. All right, same thing before. Nothing here in this connection. Nothing here in this connection, just like an open delta. Right. This one is conducted to neutral. So that one covers, covers all of it. That's our neutral path. Uh, the other picture, just like I said just a moment ago, once again, remember floating neutral. It's connected between all three, but not to the neutral line. And instead of using A as my high leg connection, I use C. Kind of keeps me in order of how I'm drawing it. I started with lighting A, then B, and C. Okay. Questions? Yeah, your secondary voltage, the is that the only thing that you do the 1.7325 to? The only ones where you're going to use 1.7325 on your phase to ground voltage is open delta and closed delta. All right. Okay. On your power, that's on your power leg. Now, when we draw Y, it's on all three legs. And we'll show you that in here in just a moment. What time is it? About 840. Okay. The power leg is only on the, I mean, excuse me, the change in voltage 1.7325 to 208 only happens on the power legs in open and closed delta. And why it actually happens to all three. That's because we're using one singular voltage, and we'll get to that in just a moment. All right. Any questions? And I know I'm thinking to myself, well, I've done this a couple hundred times with classes. It seems a little pretty simplistic to me. Get, if there's anything to it, get in a pattern. And I, I guess you guys can kind of see my pattern that's going on already. A, B, I mean, A, N, B, N, C, N, A, A B, B, C, A, C, draw in voltages. How many transformers I have? One, two, three. A, B, C. So get it, get in a pattern on all three banks that you're drawing. Okay. We'll go ahead and stop this share. Take a little stretch of the legs and breather and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. So it's eight forty-one. Let's take about fifty. 14 minutes and be back at about 855. Good round number. Okay. All right. So let's get to the last one here. That is uh, why. We got a quiz today. No. All right. But I am going to give you a project today. Today. And we didn't even finish the first project yet, have we? What? what? The one <laughs> generation to meter? I hope you have. No, we still got to present them. Oh, yeah, you still got to present them, but this is one to prepare. <laughs> we get back face to face. We'll do presentations. Not all in one day, not both of them one day, but we'll get you. It'll happen. Okay, so let me clear this one off. All right, you guys see a white screen? Yep. Okay, good deal. All right, A, whoops, wrong color. Black, okay. A, B, C, N and then A, B, C, N.
And the nice thing that'll help you guys out here, the templates we have are already pre-drawn all this on them, so you don't need to draw all this stuff in on your own when we get back to the classroom. Okay. So I'll read off the question here. The primary voltage is 2400, 4160. So 2400, 4160. And the secondary voltage is 277 and 480. Okay, so here we go with that same pattern again. A to N, B to N, C to N, A to B, B to C, A to C. All right, 2400. 2400. 2400. Yeah. 4160. 4160. 4160. B, B. How many transformers are in a Y bag? Three. Three. Lumina. Dos. Tres. In Chinese, E er sun. E er sun. E er sun. Draw my bushings in. Okay. And why does it do that? I've done that before. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. All right. I've got three transformers, so I'm going to use all three phases. A, B, and whoops, did that wrong, didn't I? Drew to two A's. Mm -hmm. Got to get rid of that. So since we have to rewire the lugs on this one, can we just draw them in with two? The secondary phase? Or you want us to go ahead and just draw it all out? Yeah, I'll show that here in just a moment. All right. I got your question now. It's kind of my filter didn't catch that one. All right. B and C. So I'm connected to all three phases, A, B, C, in order. I've got to ground the other side. I'm going to have to put my neutral ground over here. Open, excuse me, closed delta is the only one I float, so I do need to connect this one. And I'll connect it right there. Okay. So now that I'm going to work on secondary, Mr. Aaron, do these transformer windings need to be changed? The answer is going to be yes. A, C, B, D. And the way you, you've seen from me and you've been taught so far, well, I'll just draw this over here to the side. It's gonna be true for all transformers. I'm gonna use the left bushing and the far right bushing. That's going to be AC, that's where I'm gonna put it, and then BD over on this side. We're not gonna use the center. All right, so that, Mr. Aaron, that satisfies, I guess, what your question is. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. So, do you, do you want us to label them AC? No. Or you, BD. You don't, but I would like you. Well, I would like at least this. Yes, AC BD. Now, as we were instructed before, when we've seen on videos, I can use, and I'll go to red here. Hope this doesn't confuse you. 
I can use ACBD here and here. I can use them here and here. And I can use them here and here. That, that's totally legal in the electric, electrical industry. For our learning purposes and the way we do it at St. T. Cooper, Duke does it a little bit different, just like everybody else. I'll go ahead and mark these in red over here just for the learning process. That's AC, that's BD. That's AC, that's BD. That's AC, and that's BD. Okay, that's what I'm gonna, that's the format that I'm gonna use for my transformer. A Little bit different going on here. I've got to have at least one neutral and the easiest way to do this, and this is the way it's gonna look out here in the world is pick either side, either left or right of one transformer. I'm gonna pick left and I'm gonna to go to neutral. Then all I'm gonna do here is tie left and left together. Does that make all left hand bushings of my transformers neutral? Yeah. It yes. sure does. All right. Here's the fun part about it. What's left? A. B. C. B. Trigger the right line here. And C. Wiring's done. Now all I have to do is draw in my secondary voltages. So you'll, you'll notice here, there's no lighting, no high leg in, in uh, Y, right? Right. Right. So it's A to N, B to N, C to N. All I have to do is no power leg right here. That's my, my 277 is my secondary phase to neutral, it's 277. 277 and 277. No power leg. In real essence, you'll see what happens on the other side. If I take 277 times 1.7325, that's going to equal 480 volts. A to B, B to C, A to C. 480, 480, 480. We're done. Questions? So I hope you all have a good idea now of what we want to see happen as far as your drawings are concerned, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Real good video to watch on this one. If, if you watch this a couple of times, you'll just get a regular, and it, it's like me, I just get in a pattern of doing it the same way over and over and over again. And then I know I haven't got anything wrong. The big thing, the big clues to look out for here on open delta and closed delta, that high leg. Whatever that high leg is, you got to take the phase to ground voltage, let's say it's 120, and the high leg or power transformer is times 1.7325. Whatever the phase to ground voltage is, if the phase to ground voltage is 240, that's times 1.7325. That's in open delta and closed delta. Okay, questions? My wife's up and moving. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not for long, probably. <laughs> no, it's, it, Robbie didn't make it to class. I know. All right, so let me clear this off right here. Okay. All right, so the only other thing I have for you today, and this is this get prepared for another presentation. Uh, today would be a good day. I'm gonna stop the share here.
today would probably be a great day to be working on this because, well, I know some of us are stuck to the house. I don't know who I am, at least for today. Is we're gonna do a presentation on uh, the components of a substation. Does anybody know what a substation is? Yes, where the uh, it's where the transmission lines come in and distribute into the right. It, it's where I come in from transmission, my transmission circuit, long distance away. I come into a substation, and then I transform down to distribution voltages. So let me get a. Swap this over here. Well, let me do this real quick. I can probably just do a share screen. You can watch everything. Share. You also just see my regular. Yeah. Home page. All right. Let's get into. Uh, give you a demo, demo presentation here. Let me cheat. I'm gonna cheat. Don't cheat while you're recording. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go into uh, spring 2022. Let's see. Let's just do this. This two power. Search spring 2022 ELW112. And that's gonna, I'm just gonna bring one that was completed by a student before. So assignments, Dropbox, substation presentation. It's gonna be a PowerPoint or no? Uh, well, students have used PowerPoints. Uh, they've used Google Slides. Uh, you see that G Slides. Uh, try to see this. And this is probably good for you Mac people right here. I'll show you what happens. That's a Mac presentation. It's actually going to come up on screen after I click it. This file can't be previewed. So Mac doesn't work. Pages doesn't. So he submitted again in PDF. PDF, he converted his pages to a PDF. I'm not really too happy with because it's really not a slideshow. You just kind of scroll through stuff. I, uh, yeah. I don't even know what that means, PDF. PDF, post data format. And then in the PDF, he put a link to Google Slides. He, he just made it real difficult here. So you've got the option of going into your D2L and using PowerPoint. It is free to you guys. So I would highly recommend that you use it. So let's go to a let's take a look at this one right here. Substation equipment PPTX. All right, if you got something to write, oh, that's a 75. We must have had something wrong. Let me get back to a good one. iPhone users, you can download um, PowerPoint for free. You can, use it in D2, you can use it in D2L for free, too. Ethan Galley. Let's see what he's got here. There's a 97, so this looks like a good one right here. It's big full screen. So, substation equipment by Ethan Galley. And he's just got a nice picture right there, everything going on. Your first component, if you, of course, this is being recorded, you can go back on the recording, check it out. It's going to be transmission. We've used transmission before. 
And if you want to take your substation present, excuse me, your generation to meter presentation, some components in that are in the substation. Of course, transmission is one of them. So if you want to use that slide again, that's fine. Transmission lines carry bulk electricity from generating station, distribution stations, transmission power lines are extremely high voltage. They can carry a range from 34.5 thousand volts to 786 thousand volts. Really good description right there. So the first thing that I come to into a substation, So this is basically what we did just on components of a substation instead of uh, whatever the last one was. Yeah, like we're, we're, we're going to go piece through piece of a substation. Okay. Okay. So the first component, and you'll see this, guys. Let me see. Hold on a second. Here we go. It's a little bit bigger so you guys can see a little bit better. So the first thing, here's just transmission lines over here on the right-hand side. They come off the transmission line and the first thing that they have here is what they call a high side switch, All right? When the switch is open, it's called a visual open point and there's a special purpose for having a visual open point. We'll get to that on the next couple of slides. It cannot make or break load. So it's a switch that has no capability of breaking amps, right? It opens and closes and all three switches open at the same time. It's ground operated. So a man stands on the ground, you see this little pipe right here. A man stands on the ground with his rubber gloves on and he's able to open and close it. So that's the first component. Next component is called an automatic circuit interrupter. So he's still got his transmission. He's got his high side switch. Then it comes over here next. This switch right here, he's got zero pointed to, is called an ACI. Automatic circuit interrupter contains SF6 gas. That's an arc extinguisher. To quickly extinguish an arc, it is used in substations to protect transformers. All right, the substation transformer. That's a step down transformer in a substation to decrease transmission voltage. Well, he's got it, decrease voltage from transmission to distribution voltages. So there's his ACI over here on the right. Then right in the middle, he's got the substation transformer. When it leaves the transformer at the distribution voltages, it has a low side switch. So let's scroll back up here real quick. Got a high side switch that's on the high side of the transformer. Then after it leaves the transformer, I've got a low side switch. Again, he's got it stated here, visual open point. It's on the lower voltage side of the transformer. It can break and make a load. It's got an arc extinguisher on it. And it does contain SF6 gas. That's the SF6 arc extinguishing gas that's inside of it. There's a purpose behind this visual open point, both in the low side switch and the high side switch. I'm going to back up here just a second. The automatic circuit interrupter, and I know it might be a little bit small for you guys that I'm going right here, it opens and closes inside this tube an insulated tube right here. It is not a visual open point. So if I have a fault somewhere in the substation on the transformer or somewhere inside here, this switch will automatically open, but I can't see it. It'll give a red, like a green flag. There'll be a little window indicator down here that says it's open but it's not a visual open point. This, this is something that's industry wide here. I cannot work anywhere inside the zone from this switch to the low side switch without two, two visual open points. Okay, 
That's why I have a high side switch and a low side switch. Once I've satisfied both of those are open and I can see an actual open visually with my eyes, I can then work on the transformer in the ACI. Any questions there? That's an industry OSHA requirement. Visual so, open points. Okay. okay. I'll draw, I'm gonna draw that out too later on once we get done with this. All right, bus bar, we've had that one before, correct? Yeah. Right, so you can just use bus bar again. Once it leaves the low side switch, I'm gonna go along the bus here. And we know what the purpose of bus bar is. Metal bar, do you conduct electricity in a substation? The three types of bus bars are flat bus, tubular bus, and strain bus. We have to do all three again? Uh, no, as long as you know, if you put a picture of bus in there, you yeah. know what kind of bus you got in case I ask you. Right. Hey, what kind of bus is that? Flat, tubular, or strain? All right. On the bus itself, connected to the ends of the bus, is what they call a potential transformer. Let's talk about this for just a moment. We all know what a current transformer does, right? What does a current transformer do? Steps, transforms the current. Transforms really high current to right. usable currents, right? Or something I can measure, measure and meter. A potential transformer is the same thing for voltage. Okay. Now I'm not having to do it by, a, it is really a voltage transformer. It's measuring the difference <laughs> in potential, just like step potential. But I have to, all I have to do is get a reading out of it. I don't have to power anything with it. So I could be a real, real small KVA. All I need to do is get a high voltage converted to a low voltage to be able to meter and measure it. That's why they're so small here. And you'll see them connected to the bus, one for each phase, A phase, B phase, and C phase. So he's got this correct potential transform, very low KVA, used to measure high voltage in a substation, measure and meter high voltage, and usually sits at the end of the bus. Okay. Bus side disconnect, cannot make or break load, is a visual open point. We'll discuss this in a for this reason in a moment. And it's located on the bus side. If you'll notice, this is gonna come up next, the bus side of the breaker. Here's the breaker down below. Okay. Current transformer. Now we all know what it does. Measures current, maintain an accurate ratio of current in primaries and secondaries, and is usually located on top of the breaker. So the current transformers in this breaker right here are mounted just below the bushings right here. And he did a good job. He just wrote lines to where they're in. This is a distribution breaker. So they're mounted, it's hard to see. They're in these little rings that are just below. So I'm measuring current that goes in the breaker, and I'm measuring current that goes out of the breaker. And the distribution breaker itself. He just uses, uses the same picture all the time. What does a breaker do? It protects an electrical circuit by detecting overloads and faults and opens and closes automatically. And we're going to come down here. After it leaves the breaker, it goes to a voltage regulator. And we know what voltage regulators do. They add or subtract voltage to provide consistent voltage levels. They can also be used to help measure voltage on primary lines. So remember, I've got to keep that NESC standard out there of plus or minus 5%. That's what the voltage regulator do is, it is doing at the substation. Then after the line side, after the voltage regulator goes into the line side disconnect, you see if I left the bus, side disconnect, I went to the breaker. I came out of the breaker and went to the regulator. Then I went from the regulator up to the line side disconnect. And if you follow my mouse, I'm gonna leave the line side disconnect and I'm eventually gonna to go to my overhead lines. 
does not make or break load is another visual open point located on the feeder side of the breaker. And last but not least should be feeder. Distribution feeder. A distribution feeder is the primary line that distributes power throughout the circuit. So electrical energy can be distributed among consumers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13. 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14 total with a uh, introduction slide. Okay, stop that share. I'm gonna go are to all um, are all substations set up the same like no I, mean, I know they all have the same stuff that puts them together but are they all set up the same no they are not uh, there's a lot of detail I left out of this one these are the major components okay okay uh, and and the reason the reason why industry is you know do you teach about substations? Yeah, we do. And what they really want you to be able to know is if you get called out and get sent to a substation, what to look for. Right. You know, they're, they're not going to want you to know, well, what's the battery voltage? Why is this and that and everything like that? But when you walk into the substation and, uh, well, go, go to the ACI and see if the ACI is open. So that, that, you know what an ACI is. You just need to look at a little window there and it says open. It's open. Uh, right. Right, or, or uh, I've got one of the potential transformers looks like it burned up. Well, you know what you're talking about. You'd be very surprised. Uh, Lyman get there first, almost all the time. There are crews that work within your organization that work for a relay group. They're doing all the electronics parts and substation maintenance, but they may, may be one, two, three hours away. Right. And if you can walk into a substation and say, yes, uh, we've got a broken bushing on the transformer, uh, they can take a course of action there that is going to save a lot of time as far as power restoration is. Okay, let's talk about this open visual open point business for just a second. Share screen, go back to the whiteboard. Share. Get this off of here. Let me know if you've got a white screen here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to draw out the substation in, in like a single line diagram. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go transmission. I'm going to go high side switch. Okay. I'm just going to put an A in this for my ACI. Coming over here, I'm going to put another box. That's T for my transformer. Put another switch here, and that's my low side switch. So low side, and then high side switches. I'm going to stop here until I proceed on. Okay. So if the ACI opens for any reason, or if I have any damage to the transformer or the bus, anything beyond this point right here. But if I need to work in this zone, and I'll probably go to red line on this just to show you, just having the ACI show open is not sufficient. I don't have a visual open source, sort, excuse me, open point or source. I can see a green flag but I can't see vision, anything visual in the air that confirms that the switch is open. So in order for me to work in this zone, go to red here. But you can see that the low side switch is open, right? We haven't done that yet. Okay. Okay. Let's say I've, I've had a fault inside the transformer. Bang. The ACI will open. But in order for me to work on it safely by OSHA standards is I have no load now. Obviously, the, tramp, the ACI is open, so there's no load on it. I have to open this switch 
and I have to open this switch, ground my conductors in here. Now I'm able to work from here to here. That is my work zone. I am inside the two visual open points. If I did, if those switches didn't exist, I'd have to cut wire or unbolt connections or all kinds of weird stuff. It takes a lot of time to do. But with me having two switches at these locations, if I need to work, do any work inside this zone, I have to have these two open points visually seen in the air. Has everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right, the next occurrence where it happens at back to black. So now I'm going to come down my bus. Uh, I'll come out here to the end. PTs are at the end. Come off the bus. I've got a bus side disconnect. I'm going to go into my breaker. What's PT? Potential, Potential transform transformer. Yep. Okay. I'm going to come out of my breaker into a regulator. So put a B here, and an R here. But I'm gonna come out of my regulator to another switch and then out of my feeder. Okay, so this is the bus side disconnect and this is the line side disconnect. Same thing in a breaker. If I've got, and I'll go to red here, If I what's have a little, multiple, what's ahead, that little thing at? What's the little thing after the breaker right there? That little S, that little Z with the square. This right the here? Yeah. That's my here. This is my line coming off the bus going into the breaker. Uh -huh. This is my line coming out of the breaker to the regulator. The regulator, okay. And then out of the regulator to my line side disconnect. Why does it do that? Oh, I'm getting mad. Okay. All right. So, oh, I got to get back to the writing pad. Now we have fun here. The breaker is the same kind of thing here. I'm gonna draw it out right down here. So I've got inbound, off the bus, outbound, out of the breaker. So if anything happens here in my feeder circuit and the breaker opens, it's all encased. It's, it's inside the breaker. It's going to show a little flag that says open. And it's probably going to have a little green light saying it's open. Does that mean it's okay for me to work on the breaker or I can work in this zone right here? Um, yes. Is this a visual open point? A breaker? Right. No, you'd have to probably do the line side disconnect, open that in the in the bus side disconnect. Exactly. Follows the same rules as the high side and low side switch transmission side. I'm going to have so to you... open my bus side disconnect. I'm going to have to open my line side disconnect. Now I'm able to work in this zone. So you just, you really just want to isolate what you're working on. Exactly. From... Yeah, you're 100% on that, Aaron, right there. You cannot trust, and actually it's against the rules, this is not a visual open point. Even though it's giving you an indication, yeah, I'm open, it is still not a visual open point that you can see with your eyes. Same thing with the ACI. It opens up, it's gonna say open, it's gonna have a green light, everything is okay. In the industry, red hot. Red means closed, hot. Green means open, good. Okay, I still have to open the line side disconnect, 
and the bus side disconnect to give me two visual open points, install a set of grounds, we'll get into grounding later, and then I'll be able to go to work inside this zone, everywhere from the regulator to the breaker. That's what visual open points are all about. Questions? Right. I don't have a question, but one thing that I that I picked up working on electrical is if somebody comes and tells you, hey, I got this isolated, go check it for yourself. Yeah. Like right. you don't you don't never want to take somebody's word for it. Right. And uh yeah, you're 100 percent correct. What I in fact, let's see. Thursday will be at the field. Friday will be at the field. Today he can work on this. Uh, just gathering ourselves up. What do I say Tuesday of next week for the substation presentation? Okay. Sound like a plan? Deal. Okay, sounds like a deal. And of course, we'll help your ways through that also. So what time are we holding Somebody got the time? 9.30. Time for a nap. 9.33. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Time for a nap. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do here is, you know, Aaron brought up a great safety thing. I'm going to show a safety video here. Stop that share. Get rid of this. And me and Jamie need our naps in. I hear you, buddy. I know. I'm surprised Jamie ain't start snoring yet. I'm good, <laughs> I'm good this morning, man. I'm <laughs> outside instead of sitting on the couch. <laughs> man, I got up and chugged two cups of coffee. I'm ready. Jamie's out there climbing that telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted. <laughs> This. Yeah, I'll take when we get back. Hey, what happened to my Zoom meeting? There it is. <coughs> this is going to be on the YouTube too, Shoemaker. Uh, today's class? Yeah. That's correct. That's a big tune for. All right, y'all see a YouTube I'm, screen? Yeah, I meant to ask you Friday. What do you what do you, what are we doing? Uh, I know we're going to the field, but are we still leaving early? Or are we gonna be there all day? No, we'll have regular hours Friday. Okay. Fridays are half days, regardless. All right, I I didn't know if because we missed so much we was gonna stay. Or we're not we're missing gonna, much, yeah. dude. We're we're keeping right up. I it's know, man, but I, I need my time in the in the in the tools, man. Oh my goodness! All right, so oh, Aaron. Aaron brought up earlier. Uh, always test, you know. Don't trust anybody else. Always test what you're working on before you start working on something. Now, I'm sure, Aaron, you had different kinds of tools in on your side that would test. Uh, we use what they call either a tick tracer or what they call an amp probe. And this yeah. is what this is what it is right here. So here we go. Hello, my name is Sans Ritchie. I'm the territory sales manager for Amprobe. I've been working in the field of test and measurement for 26 years. Here we have the Amprobe TIC 300 Pro. This is a non-contact voltage indicator that can let you know if there's voltage on a line without actually having to touch the wire. It's useful in both utility and industrial applications since it has both a low and a high range. And the types of things that this would be used for is to check power transmission lines, distribution equipment, down power lines, fuses, and load breaker connections. And what it will do is it will give us an indication if there's voltage on the wire or not. 
there's two ranges. There's a low range which detects voltage from 30 volts AC up to 1500 volts AC. There's a high range which extends this from 1500 volts AC all the way up to 122,000 or 22 K volts AC. We have two buttons on the front which tell us which mode we're on, either the low or the high. We also have a test key. What that's for is to make sure that the batteries are good. You want to make sure that your batteries are good when you decide that something is either powered on or powered off. So if I turn the unit on, what it does is it gives me both a audible and a visual indication that we have voltage on the line. Here I have the combination of the TIC 300 Pro and the TIC 410. The TIC 410 from Amprobe is an accessory that will extend the reach of your TIC 300 Pro voltage indicator. The reason for this is the higher voltage you're checking, the more distance you want between your hand mm -hmm. and that wire. This pole can provide mm -hmm. that. It's an extension pole which extends in a non-insulated way the tip of the TIC 300 Pro to where your hand is going to be. It has an extension so we can either make it shorter or longer and also there's tabs on the handle of the TIC 300 that I can use to match the tabs on the handle so I can tighten this up at different angles and it will stay at those angles. For more information, please contact your T-Equipment Test and Measurement Specialist. Cheers. Okay, so the biggest thing, and there, there are different models and everything like this. This was pretty popular. There's an older one called a Tick Tracer. Uh, to be surprisingly, these things are really inexpensive. Uh, I think the Tick Tracer is down around 20 bucks right now. Yeah, I got uh, one in the back of my truck. I'll bring yeah. it up. So, one thing he did include here is it's it's a proximity tester you don't have to make contact to determine if uh the conductor or whatever you're working on there has has any kind of voltage on it and usually what they'll do is they'll tick or they'll make that tone that beep 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 tone and you'll see the pulse and the lights and whenever you come close to a voltage that beep will go solid it'll make a solid tone and your lights will go solid. That should let, let you know that voltage is present. It will not let you know what the voltage is. You've got two different ranges there. You can use low, which is secondary voltages, and high, which is primary voltages. It won't let you know what the voltage is, only if voltage is present. If you notice, you see right down on the far right-hand side, that's, that's a universal. You can put it on an extendo stick. And if you want to take that extendo stick and put it up close to the primary lines, and if you can, you can hear it from that distance and see the lights, they go solid and that thing goes solid in tone and your lights go solid, stay on constantly, you know there's voltage presence on the line. Pretty cool tool. You'll know, I, I guess you guys have probably heard this by now. If it's not grounded, it's not dead. What a lot of people fail to say in their sayings out there, what do you have to do before you ground a conductor? Say you got a conductor out there, you want to work on it, and you need to ground it before you start working on it. You don't want to use rubber gloves. What do you need to do prior to grounding it? Um, Make sure it's energized. Take the Test. fuse out. Yeah. A lot of people kind of leave that, hey, don't work on that until you ground it. Well, my, my saying is don't work on that until you test it and ground it. Test it before grounding it. <laughs> because if you skip the test part and for some reason that line is energized and you go to ground it, you're going to have a lot of fire in your face. Test it, then ground it. A little disclaimer here, and this is probably well off the market. I do know. A while back, Ampro came out with a with one of these testers here that worked in reverse. And it was, boy, I tell you one thing, Lyman got kind of upset. It would stay solid all the time, solid tone and solid lights. And when you brought it in proximity to an energized conductor, the unit would go off. We didn't what? like that. Yeah, we didn't like that. 
we wanted some kind of indication that the unit was on and then some kind of indication that voltage was present. But uh, a company did come out, I'm not gonna say their name, came out with a tester that just stayed on all the time. You turn it on, it stayed on. And when you came in proximity to voltage, the unit went silent. So, man, that'd kill somebody. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't know if it was a wiring problem or whatever they did, but uh, we got in touch with that organization and then I think they shut those things down, but they did sell a good many before that was found out. Okay. All right. So, plans. Uh, for those of you that need to quiz, reopen back up, I will get that started. Uh, be working on your presentations. Resumes. ELW 231, the resume drop box is open if you want to submit resumes. CDLs. If you've got the time to get your CDL and get out there and get your physical, get those parts done. And uh, what else? Anything else? Accounts drained because he said he he's trying to beat our Monday. Yeah. Who? Uh, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Appreciate that. Mark Jones schedule looks like Monday. Get your money to him. Give him a credit card number. Give him a debit card number. Let's go ahead and get it paid for and taken care of. And it makes it so easy when it comes out to the field. He just hands your tools to you and your receipt. <laughs> and have a nice day rather than have the call in your credit card number and get all this information square. Uh, Terrell, I know your situations, a couple of you were just paying straight out cash. That's fine also. Try to have uh, as close to as possible exact change. Okay, so I will go ahead and end it here. I will remain on Zoom probably the rest of the portion of the day. If you guys got any questions, plenty of work to do. And if there is nothing further, I will say have a good day. Tomorrow morning, everybody. Yep, tomorrow morning, unless you are feel, still feeling symptoms <clears throat> or sick, tomorrow morning we will be at the field 8 a.m. So you're going to get the quizzes open Who? soon? soon. Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, I got to get a hold of V for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dalen, I'll be able to take care of. Yeah, I got to take it. Again. I okay. didn't take it to begin with. All right. Are you about to open that back up? Uh, yeah, as soon as I get done here, I'll, I'll text you on uh, right. Discord. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Okay, gentlemen. Well, I'm going to stop the recording. And...